Phase Change Unit Lesson 2.1, Causing Freedom of Movement Changes. In this lesson, we use a digital model to represent phase changes from the Weird Water Events article set in order to show how a transfer of energy into or out of a substance, which is an energy and matter concept, can cause molecules of freedom of, of movement to change, which is a cause and effect concept. Step-by-step -step lesson plan includes completing a warm-up and handing that in. In step two, we use articles and the simulation to explain phase changes. We hand that in. And then we use a modeling tool to demonstrate each of the Ford Weir Water event article happenings and hand that in. The unit question, how can the appearance of a substance change without it becoming a different substance? We dive deeper into that with a chapter question what could cause liquid methane to change phase? So now we're starting to point our focus to Titan. And then in this investigation, uh, our part of the chapter question we'll address is what can cause a molecule's freedom of movement to change? If we can answer this, it helps better answer the chapter question, which then helps us better answer the unit question. Taking a look at lesson 2.1 in Amplify, we arrive at our lesson brief. And as always, we have our digital resources available to us. In the warm-up, we're presented with a single question to respond to. It does have us refer back to Lesson 1.3. So if you remember how to get there, you're going to have to go up uh, to the top, to the breadcrumbs, uh, the pathway, click back all the way in Phase Change, and then into Chapter 1 in the Lesson 1.3. Uh, or if you made any drawings on paper, like you printed off the PDF and actually made paper drawings, you could pull those out wherever you have them and, and reference those during the warm-up. Be sure to hand that in. In step two, recreating weird water events in the simulation, uh, we're going to be referring back to the articles and looking at portions of that article. Before you do, there's a projection they want you to see. Again, you can go back to lesson brief and view it if you need to. But what happened to the lake? We saw this projection a while ago, and it was showing that area on Titan that had changed from 2007 to 2009, we're trying to figure out what exactly is happening there. So in the first step, uh, you are going back to the Amplify library. You can open it up in the link. And each of the four articles, uh, they are pointing you to a specific part in that, either to a paragraph or a sentence in that article. So you're not having to reread the entire article. Uh, they want you to focus in and see if you can identify questions that would relate to the investigation question. What can cause molecules freedom of movement to change? In step two, you're going to head over to the simulation. Uh, and before you do, there are some projections to view as well. So the Weird Water discussion. Discuss the following questions with your group. What were the similarities between the phase changes each group member explored? Now again, if you're home alone, that you're doing this all by yourself, but if you have a way to communicate with others, uh, feel free to do that. Uh, what were the differences between the phase changes each, mem each group member explored? And based on these observations, create a sentence that answers the investigation question. What can cause molecules freedom of movement to change? So they want you to start coming up with ideas uh, if you were to answer that question. What can cause molecules freedom of movement to change uh, from freezing to Freezing, condensing, evaporating, melting. These are the terms we want to get used to using. Uh, they indicate phase changes, right? Freezing is from liquid to solid. Condensing is from uh, gas to liquid. Evaporating is from liquid to gas. And melting is from solid to liquid. So over here, the freezing, condensing, this is when substances cool down, they get colder. Energy is transferred out of those substances. Uh, in the evaporating and melting, the substance is heating up. It's getting hotter or warmer, and energy is transferred into the substance to do that. In the next projection, it's a key concept we want to make sure we understand. When energy is transferred to or from a substance, think of it into or out of a substance, it can change the molecule's freedom of movement. What can cause molecules' freedom of movement to change? They sum it up in this diagram. Energy is transferred into the substance. Moving in this direction, you're going to see solids move to liquids, move to gases through melting or evaporating. If energy is transferred out of a substance, we're going to move from right to left. We're going to go from a gas condensing to a liquid, freezing to a solid.
Okay, and yes, there are circumstances where solids can go straight to gases and gases can go straight to, straight to solids, excuse me, but uh, we're not going to focus that uh, with that right now in our investigation questions. So that is your task in step two, is using the phase change simulation, uh, you're going to recreate situations uh, as the gas and the flash flood, solid in the glacier caves uh, for each of these scenarios. Uh, and then you have to come back and using the word bank, fill in this table, the types of phase changes and what causes to happen and how did it change in the sim. So let's take a look at the simulator again. Uh, it's this molecules of motion simulator. Don't forget you have the opportunity to click on individual molecules and track them. You have substances A, B, C, D on the left, so you can switch between them uh, with the idea that you would be selecting things that would act as solid, liquid, or gases. Okay. And all of these instructions are there for you uh, on Amplify. So you're going to want to keep both tabs open, okay. and you're going to want to refer to these making the molecules, molecules freedom of movement change uh, in different ways as you did before. And uh, don't forget, you can rotate, you can bump, you can change the speed of your playback in the upper right. You can view kinetic energy uh, and that indicate low and high levels of energy, if that helps. Uh, and that, but then come away with some understanding so you can respond to this, uh, to this graphic and fill it in when you're done. And then be sure to hand that in. In step three, you have four scenarios from the weird water events uh, just like you had the earlier articles that you referred to the four different articles you will be referring to them again here but not the article they've designed a model for each one of those scenarios so the first one the flash flood model when you click on it uh, it's going to open up a new model you haven't seen before now before we go over that model uh, there is a projection for you to see because as you work there they are encouraging discussion. Once again, in this case, many of you are at home alone and you don't have the opportunity to, for discussion. Encourage again phones, chats, social media, email if you can. If not, uh, someone in your house you might explain this to. Or just have a discussion with yourself. Some of our best uh, understanding comes from self-talk. But you're going to take turns uh, as a listener and presenter. The idea is that you are sharing out and explaining uh, what you accomplished in your model. So what did you hope to show with your model and how did you do this? Uh, expecting your audience to have uh, any questions about the model based on your explanations. So we head back uh, again and take a look at the model. In this case, the first one is a flash flood. Uh, there are instructions always in the upper left. You can click on those. But as it explains in Amplify screen, you're going to be dragging two of these boxes over and dropping them in. And as you drop them in, one in the left column and one in the right column, you're going to decide which energy level they have. So the lower energy, you're going to move it down. The higher energy uh, they, they contain, the, more, the higher up, you're going to put it in the column. Once you do place those boxes, once again, you have to click on the pencil, which we've done so many times before. Choose uh, Molecule Motion. Choose a phase and choose uh, descriptors. Close those. I'm going to randomly pick uh, a second one. Again, don't go by my selections. And in this case, I'm showing that the energy level in the liquid is lower than the energy level in the solid. Again, not guaranteeing that these answers are correct or incorrect. I'm just explaining the arrangement of the model. I want to leave the correct answers to you. Once you have those placed, the next thing you need to do is grab arrows, and one of these arrows, and drag it over, and you'll see the middle column light up. That means you're going to drop that in there and indicate, did the energy level go up as the phase changed, or did it go down? And you can adjust these. You can connect them to the cross lines if you want. You don't have to but you're indicating energy change. And then you have to decide, does that arrow pointing up show energy going in or energy coming out? And I'm just going to randomly grab one of these and label it so you can see how it works. But your job is to make sense of what's going on with the phase change in this scenario 
And again, remind yourself at the top, there's a descriptor that tells you, in this case, you're modeling flash floods in slot canyons. If you don't remember the details about that, you need to go back to the article, Weird Water Events, Flash Floods in Slot Canyons. Okay, once you do that, you're going to hand that in, and that is going to give you a screenshot that will be placed automatically in the Flash Floods box. But then you need to go to the next step, because as I mentioned before, you are modeling now glacier caves. And then in step three, you're, you're modeling Niagara Falls. And in step four, you're modeling Old Faithful. Okay, so you have to do four of these models. After you hand in each one, your image will be placed in the box below. Uh, you could annotate it if you want uh, and then hand it in when you're done. That's the end of step three and the end of lesson 2.1.